Hello, this is Tim Lawton, MP for East Worthing and Shoreham, with a podcast today about the comprehensive spending review and the awkward, awkward statement we just had from the, the Chancellor. Now, it was always going to be a tricky balancing act for the Chancellor. We need to keep reducing the deficit, which we've been doing over the last five years. And so the Chancellor today laid out his spending plans to take us to the end of this Parliament in 2020. It means that a lot of government departments have had to produce some uh, savings over the next um, few years. But there are also some areas which have been protected. By 2020, the Chancellor is on course to have eliminated the deficit altogether. That means that we will be living within our means at long last and can start paying down our debt. That's been long overdue. And the Chancellor's been able to do this because we have in the UK the strongest growth of all the G7 economies and our growth rate in the economy is forecast to continue on a sort of 2.4, 2.5% over the next few years. And the tax take coming into the revenue is forecast to grow from all different areas, from private taxation, from corporate um, taxation and other areas. So there were four main priorities which the Chancellor set out behind this comprehensive spending review and he's been able to find £12 billion worth of savings and still make these our priorities. The four priorities are firstly to produce a modern integrated health and social care um, system and additional money has been found for the National Health Service which is everyone's um, priority. I've always been concerned in a constituency like mine with a uh, a large ageing population that adult social care and how we look after our senior citizens in later years is a growing issue over the next few years and that's why we need to combine our budgets so that people don't have to stay in hospital for longer than they need to because there is proper quality adult social care back in the community to look after them. That is going to be a key issue and it's one thing underlying this comprehensive spending review. The second issue that came up was about the continuing devolution of powers. We've seen large parts of government control and budget being handed over to some of our big urban areas like Manchester, giving more control to um, urban um, mayors. Again, I think that's uh, a good trend and we are looking to see how we can combine with other parts of West Sussex and perhaps Brighton to devolve greater powers back to communities in West Sussex and constituencies like mine as well. That was a second theme of this spending review. The third theme was all about closing the uh, gap between the haves and the have-nots and the whole social justice agenda. And that's why the pupil premium uh, in education is so important, making sure that those people from less well-off uh, backgrounds get that extra leg up to be able to compete on a level playing um, field. That's why continuing to take people out of tax. We've taken now three million people out of tax altogether is such an important thing. But at the same time, making sure we continue to clamp down on tax avoidance and tax evasion. And so some welcome measures that came out today is that an extra £800 million saved from overhauling the way the uh, revenue tax do their business is going to be invested in clamping down on further tax um, uh, avoidance and uh, evasions, quite rightly. There's going to be a additional stamp duty charge brought in for people buying buy-to-let um, properties, because in many cases they are foreign investors and they're not going to live in those uh, homes, and it means that people who are on the waiting list for uh, council housing or people who could possibly get into housing of their own are seeing prices continually bumped up out of their um, grass. So it's a very important um, issue that we're going to make sure that everybody pays their tax and that people who come into this country and make money in this country are properly taxed as, uh, as well. On the house building, a very important announcement today that the house building budget is going to be uh, doubled, a commitment to um, now build within this parliament at least 400,000 affordable homes. That won't be enough, but it's going to be a big improvement of what has gone before. We know again in parts of West Sussex in my constituency with lots of people on the waiting list just how desperately we need to bring more housing into um, public use. And the fourth theme, and again a very topical theme that came out in the Chancellor's statement today, was the importance of national security. So I'm really pleased that amongst the uh, announcements has been that there will be no cut 
response to the policing budget. And this has been a very contentious issue which we feared that there were going to be further cuts in policing budgets. Well, the Chancellor has said that police budgets will not be affected. That's got to be really good uh, news. There has been uh, substantial extra investment in national uh, security in the in form of uh, uh, national intelligence, recruiting more people working in our security uh, services. In the wake of Paris in particular, that's the way we battle uh, against terrorism on our streets. In addition to which, of course, we've now got a commitment that 2% of the economy will be spent on our uh, defence. And earlier this week, the uh, Prime Minister set out lots of funding priorities within the defence budget as well. Very important, I know, to many of my constituents. Now, a few other things came out today uh, that I think are cause for celebration. After many protests were raised about the proposals to cut tax credits, many people wrote to me. Um, I raised it and actually voted against uh, those tax cuts in one debate which we had here uh, in Parliament. I'm glad that the Chancellor has listened. There were concerns that actually those cuts were too extensive and actually disincentivised those people who were going out to, uh, to work, often part-time, trying to do the right thing, earning money, looking after their own families. Well, the Chancellor has reflected and so he's changed his decision and I'm very pleased and it got a big cheer in the House that he has decided today um, not to go ahead with those changes to tax credits at all and I know many people will welcome that and it does show that actually the government and the Chancellor does listen where there are unintended consequences as was the fear here for a proposal which had been floated earlier in the uh, year. Some other highlights that I just want to flag up today that free school meals uh, for those classes in primary schools will remain. There have been fears that those would uh, go. I visited a primary school in Shoreham just last week to be shown just how um, nutritious meals are an important part of children's uh, experience at uh, schools and in fact some empirical evidence showing that those kids who get a nutritious um, lunch actually perform better at uh, school, their concentration is better and, and so on. National Citizen Service which is a scheme which this, brought, uh, this government brought in when I was the minister responsible for helping to design it. 80,000 16 and 17 year olds this year went through the National Citizen Service scheme. Uh, that is going to be extended and expanded and over the next few years it's going to be able to cater for 300,000 young people, giving them some really valuable life skills. It's all about throwing them at the deep end, it's about mixing with other people they wouldn't uh, necessarily normally um, mix with and it's about volunteering in their communities. A hugely successful scheme and we've seen many people in Worthing and Ada go through that scheme and say how fantastic it is and how it's really transformed their outlook and how they want to do more to help within their um, communities. A few other uh, things that came up. Apprentices, a guarantee that we're going to have three million new apprentices by 2020, partly to be financed by an apprentice um, levy of 0.5% of the salary um, bill, but smaller businesses who would have been impacted by that if they've got a bill of uh, less than £3 million will be exempted from that uh, levy, but again encouraged to take on apprentices, because I've seen locally how the apprentice schemes have really produced some fantastic prospects for young um, people. So it's been a big success story, the apprentice um, scheme. We're going to see the biggest real terms increase in pensions for the last 15 uh, years and again that would be good news for many of my uh, older uh, constituents who rely on the pension and the various other perks that go with it which are being um, untouched. And we're also going to extend the small business rate relief scheme for at least a further year. Again that will be welcome news because business rates are a very sizable part of the bills of small businesses and retail businesses uh, in particular. The whole scheme for business rate uh, relief is going, and business rates is going to be looked at anyway, but in the meantime it's going to be extended for, a, uh, for another year. And another thing that will be particularly welcome news uh, in uh, Sussex is the Chancellor confirmed today that the way we fund schools and the funding formula is going to be abolished and we're going to have a new national formula instead. Now what that has meant in the past is that schools in West Sussex 
have come absolutely bottom of the table for the amount of funding that they get per pupil, even though in deprived areas of West Sussex, compared with deprived areas in other parts of the country, we get a much lower funding. That can't be fair. So we went to lobby Nicky Morgan, the Secretary of State for uh, Education, to say that actually West Sussex children deserve a better deal, and that's been listened to by the Chancellor, so we'll wait for the details of that, but it looks as though our schools are going to get a better and fairer share of that funding um, cake. And there was some good news as well on the so-called tampon tax. So as you saw my podcast recently, where there's this absurd situation which VAT is charged on uh, women's sanitary um, products, that the Chancellor gave a commitment that we're going to try and get that changed, but it's down to Europe, so we've got to get our partners to agree that. But in the meantime, what he's done, and I think this is a very smart move, is the £15 million in revenue that it brings in is going to be specifically reinvested in various women's health, women's uh, refuge um, projects as well, which I think is a really good use until we can get the law changed so that that VAT is, uh, is abolished um, altogether. And the Chancellor announced he's going to protect the Foreign and Commonwealth Office budget. Again, when diplomatic power and influence is so important around the world for the, uh, for the UK, and I've seen in many countries the job that our ambassadors and our diplomatic staff uh, do. It's important that they've got the resources to be able to do that. There's also going to be an increase in resources for the BBC World Service. Again, really vital when broadcasting to sensitive hotspots around the world, not least in the uh, Middle East. And of course, the counter-terrorism budget is going to be increased by some uh, 30%. So I think overall, this is a really encouraging comprehensive spending review and autumn statement today. There will be some areas that will lose. The cost of government overall is falling, but in those key areas where we need to continue uh, to invest, um, there are going to be some more resources. And the overall spending by government, which currently in this year is £756 billion, by the end of the Parliament will be £821 billion. So actually we talk about cuts, but spending is going to go up. And spending on the National Health Service, which is one of the largest um, parts of, uh, of that, is going to increase to £120 billion from its current £101 billion now, again over the lifetime of this Parliament. So some good news there. Some real priorities which I think many of my constituents will share have been flagged up, have been given those extra resources, some common sense measures uh, as well. So I think something for everyone in this comprehensive spending review. But above all, it's a clear indication that we're going to keep a firm hand on the economic um, tiller to make sure we can get to a situation where Britain is spending and living within uh, its means. We can start to create a surplus to pay down the large debts created by governments uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the past and to make sure that if we have a strong economy, we can also have strong public services as well, be it health, schools, defence and so on. So a lot of detail there, but overall I think many people will welcome the news from the Chancellor today.